Missandei arrives on Dragonstone, accompanied by Daenerys, Varys, Tyrion and Grey Worm. She follows Daenerys from the shore of the island to the hall of the castle. Knowing this is her defining moment, and coming home, Missandei stops Grey Worm from continuing into the chamber of the painted table with Daenerys. After witnessing Tyrion's announcement that the Unsullied will attack Casterly Rock to seize it, that being Daenerys's first move in the upcoming war, on Daenerys's council, Missandei visits Grey Worm in his chambers, presuming that he will lead the attack. There they engage in a conversation in which Grey Worm tells her that all the Unsullied have to face their weaknesses, his only weakness being her, leading to a tender kiss. When she realizes what he wants, Missandei removes her clothes, but when she tries to remove his, too, he hesitates before letting her see his castration wounds. Then they start making love by him orally pleasuring her. Missandei, Tyrion, and several Dothraki including Corno, greet the king in the north Jon Snow and his advisor Davos Seawith on the shores of Dragonstone. After Tyrion and Jon exchange pleasantries, Missandei orders the Northmen to lay down their weapons, which they oblige. While walking up to the castle, Missandei talks with Davos, who takes an interest in her homeland of Narth. On the way, the group is startled by Queen Daenerys's dragons but Missandei and Tyrion maintain their composure. In the throne room, Missandei introduces her queen by her many titles. During the meeting, Danny demands that Jon Snow bend the knee and pledge fealty to her. Jon Snow is reluctant to bend the knee due to the historical animosity between the Starks and Targaryens dating back to the time of the Mad King. Jon Snow also warns Daenerys about the threat posed by the White Walkers and their undead armies. The two sides are unable to reach a common ground due to Jon Snow's reluctance to submit to Daenerys and Danny's skepticism of the existence of White Walkers and Whites. After receiving news from Varys that Yara's fleet has been attacked, Danny adjourns the meeting and tasks Missandei with giving Jon Snow and his followers lodging and food for their stay. After learning that Euron's Iron Fleet has wiped out much of Yara's fleet, Missandei, Tyrion, and Varys attend a meeting with Queen Daenerys. When Daenerys proposed riding with her dragons to raise the Iron Fleet, Missandei and Tyrion argue against it because they do not have information on Euron's location and the fear that one stray arrow may kill Daenerys. Missandei is present when Tyrion briefs the council about the Unsullied's assault on the Lannister seat of King's Landing. Grey Worm leads a successful assault on the castle only to learn that the bulk of the Lannister forces have retreated and that they have stumbled into a trap as Euron's Iron Fleet burn the ships that brought them, stranding the Unsullied men. Daenerys and Missandei head down to the beach. Missandei is worried about Grey Worm because they haven't heard any news from Casterly Rock yet. Daenerys asks what happened between her and Grey Worm, and Missandei wryly says, many things, smiling. She then continues into the caves with Jon, Daenerys and Davos. Upon exit, they are informed of the events of the sack of Highgarden and the fall of Casterly Rock. Following the information, her queen decides on riding Drogon into battle, staging the events of the Battle of the Goldroad. Davos and Jon encounter Missandei as they wait for her queen to return. She politely inquires why Jon's surname is, Snow. Even though House Stark has ruled the North for centuries, and his father Ned and brother Rob both had the surname, Stark, but he doesn't. Jon and Davos explain to her the special system of regional surnames used in Westeros for bastard children of the nobility. Missandei doesn't know what they mean, so they literally explain that Jon's parents weren't married. Davos asks if they have similar customs for bastards on Narth. Quizzically, Missandei explains that, marriage, as such does not exist in Narth, so she finds the idea of a, bastard, to be quite an alien concept. Davos says that sounds liberating. Jon then asks when she left, to which Missandei finally reveals that she was taken by slavers, to be freed only years later by Daenerys. When Davos suggests Missandei simply traded one master for another, she counters that she and all the freed slaves serve Daenerys because they choose to. Davos keeps pushing asking what would happen if Missandei decided to return to Narth immediately. She responds that Daenerys would give her a ship and wish her good fortune. While Missandei, Davos and Jon are still on the causeway, they see a lone ironborn ship approaching the island, a survivor of Yara Greyjoy's fleet. Theon Greyjoy himself and some of his men come to shore on a rowboat. As they disembark, 
Theon and the Ironborn encounter John while Masande, Davos and a few Dothraki escort guards witness a confrontation between John and Theon since when they both last saw each other before John was leaving Winterfell to join the Night's Watch. After the death of Viserion at the hands of the Night's King, Daenerys agrees to pledge all her forces to the Northern cause, changing the objectives of Masande's queen. Masande sails into King's Landing, with Varys, Theon, Jon and Tyrion, nervously watching. The Iron Fleet dominates Blackwater Bay with their vast ships. Upon arrival, they are escorted to the Dragon Pit by Bronn. Missande then watches as the parley unfolds, in which Cersei is shown a white. When Jon declares he has pledged allegiance to Daenerys, Cersei refuses to commit to the Great War. She ultimately pretends to agree after a conversation with Tyrion. Unbeknownst to all, Cersei reveals to Jaime that she has no plans to help fight the dead in the Great War, and is secretly hoping the army of the dead will defeat them for her. Missande later sails to White Harbor, as Daenerys and Jon join all their collective forces to defeat the Night King.